Locrian is the seventh mode of the major scale, and it therefore corresponds to the seventh chord of the major scale, which is a diminished chord or a minor seven flat five chord. So it lends itself to a very dark, heavy, almost sinister sound. In fact, a song such as Judas Priest's Painkiller uses the Locrian mode. <laughs> So while the Locrian mode works great for this style of music, it's certainly not exclusive to heavy metal. We can use it for all styles of music. So let's go ahead and start off with a Locrian pattern. We'll do these in the key of E because our backing track will be in the key of E Locrian. Here's one pattern. So the notes in the key of E Locrian are E, F, G, A, B flat, C, and D. So we're going to start off on the A string. We'll play frets 7 to 8. That's E to F. Now to the D string, 5, 7, 8. Those notes are G, A, and B flat. So here's what we've done so far. On the G string, we'll play C and D, frets 5 and 7. And now we're back to our root note E on the 5th fret of the B string. So we've just done one octave. Now we can continue, play frets 6 and 8 on the B string, 5, 6, 8 on the high E. And from the beginning, here's what we've just done. And now let's go back down. Now we can continue to descend below this note E, play D on the fifth fret of the A string, and then we can play C, B flat, and A, frets 8, 6, 5 on the low E. And let's work our way back up, 6 to 8, to the A string now, 5, and back to the root note E on the seventh fret. So when practicing the scale pattern, I would highly recommend starting from the root note, play to the highest note available, down to the lowest note, and then end on the root. Three note per string scale patterns are also very useful. We can do a three note per string scale pattern by starting with the seventh fret on the A string, same root note, but we'll use the fourth finger to play that root. And here's the scale pattern. So we'll take a look at this scale shape and then we'll do a short solo using both of the patterns that we've gone over. So we'll start off 7th fret of the A string, D string 3, 5, 7, G string 3, 5, 7, B string 5, 6, 8, E string 5, 6, 8. We've just done this. And let's come back down. We can continue to descend on the A string. We can play 5 to 3. Low E string, 6, 5, 3. And then back up, 5, 6. And then 3, 5, 7 on the A string. Here's the whole pattern once again. Now we're going to do a short solo that's going to use both of these scale patterns. So here's our first solo using the E Locrian mode. We'll check it out with the backing track and then come back and break it down.
So this solo starts off nice and easy by ascending the E Locrian mode. So the first lick goes like this. <laughs> So we're going to start off on the 7th fret of the A string, D string 3-5-7, G string 3-5-7, 5 on the B string, hammer on 5 to 6 and then back to 5 on the B. And then we'll play that whole phrase two times. Next phrase. Starting on the B string, I'll hammer on and pull off 5, 6, 5, and then down to 7 on the G string. And then I'll go back to 5 on the B. Once I get back to the 5th fret of the B string, I'm going to hold that note and then just slide upwards. Now back to the B string, 5-6-5, five, five, followed by 7-G, 5 on the G, back to 7, and this lick ends 5-6-5 five, five on the B string. Centering a lot of the idea around the note E. That's the root note of the mode that we're playing in, E Locrian. Okay, so here's the phrase once again. And here's the next phrase. So I'm going to play 5-6-5 five, five on the B, followed by 7-G. Back to 5 on the B. 8-5 to five on the B. Now bend up a whole step from the 8th fret of the B string and then play 8, 6, 5. Back to 6 on the B. Now bend 6 up a whole step and then play 6 without the bend. Here's the whole phrase. And now we're into the second part of the backing track, which we're going to go over later. But we're going to start off with some octaves now. And here's the next part of the solo. So this part of the solo starts off with a D octave shape, 5A7 on the G string. Move this up two frets to E, and then slide up one fret to F. Back down one fret to E. Now I'm going to play an octave G, fifth fret of the D string, along with eight on the B string. Move this down two frets to F. Here's what we've just played. After that F octave shape, the next three notes are 5-7-5 five, on the G string. So if I put the octaves together with that, here's the entire phrase. And here's the rest of the solo. So we'll play 7 on the G string, 6 on the B string. Again, those two notes. Back to 7 G. Now bend up a whole step from the 8th fret of the B string, and then grab 5 on the high E. 
six to eight on the high E. Now a pre-bend from the eighth fret of the B string, so we bend up a whole step, strike the note, release, and then pull off to the sixth fret. Back to eight on the B string. So we've just done this. And then we'll end by playing eight on the high E and then doing a trill between five and six. So we're just gonna continuously hammer on and pull off. This will be on the high E string. On the B string, same thing, five to six. Seven, eight on the D string. Seven, eight on the A string. And the solo ends five on the A, and then five, slide to seven. Let's try the whole solo now. We're going to start on the and of two, so I'm going to let that tonality be established. I'll hear the chord first, and then I'll start playing, almost as if I'm answering the chord. One, two, three, four. One, two. And there's our first solo using the E Locrian mode.